All right, we have finished public participation. We'll go to item number 12. Action is necessary or appropriate on matters discussed in executive session. Do I have, let's see, do I have any motions? Is that selected employment? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd like to make the motion that we approve the selected employment items under Exhibit A. Is there a second? Ms. Hines seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor? Six and zero no's, so that motion passes. Um, are there any motions, any other motions on items from executive session? Mr. Yeah, I have one prepared um, concerning uh, executive session item 3C. I make the motion that the administration contract an engineering firm or firms to investigate and advise as to courses of action concerning possible latent construction defects at the Chapin High School 2008 bond referendum project. The selection of, engineering, of the engineering firm or firms shall be subject to board approval as indicated in the district procurement code section 710. Is there a second? Ms. Gardner seconds. Any discussion? Seeing none, those in favor of that motion, please raise your hand. And that's a six and zero. So that motion passes. Uh, are there any other motions regarding executive session discussion? I have a motion under item 3D. Okay. I move that we ask the superintendent to turn over the information we have on sewer taps purchased in 2013 and 2014 to the proper authorities for their review and determination and report results of that meeting back to the board. Okay, is there a second? A second, Ms. Gardner or Ms. Hines. Are there any discussion on that? Seeing none, those in favor of that motion, raise your hand. Six to zero. Thank you. Um, any other motions as a result of, it, of our discussions in executive session? Seeing none, then we will move on to item 13, COVID-19 related sick leave. FFCRA EPSLA Exhibit C. Dr. Milton. Thank you, Chair Hammond. Uh, Dr. Turner, our Chief of Human Resources at the podium this evening, she'll talk us through Exhibit C. Dr. Turner. On January 25th, 2021, the board passed a motion that allowed the administration to create an emergency plan using ESSER funds to ensure employees who needed to take paid leave for COVID-19 related reasons were able to do so through June 30th, 2021. And our employees have expressed appreciation for the extension of that. We've done that through the continuation of allowing up to 80 hours of emergency paid leave for qualifying reasons that were allowed under the original Families First Coronavirus Response Act. As a reminder of the allowable reasons, it included if the employee themselves were subject to federal, state, or local quarantine or isolation orders, if the employee themselves had been advised by a healthcare provider to quarantine, or if the employees themselves were experiencing symptoms and seeking a diagnosis. This plan did not include emergency coverage for leave related to COVID related quarantine or illness of an employee's children. In anticipation of the additional funds to be received under ESSER II, administration is seeking support of the board to expand the emergency leave plan to cover COVID-related quarantines or illnesses of employees' children. Again, this would be up to the 80 hours and would apply through June 30th, 2021. So we're basically extending what we had already done. Yes, ma'am. Gotcha. Um, so you would need a motion, Dr. Mel? You would like a motion on that. Has Ms. Gardner, do you have one? Or Ms. Hines, do you have that prepared? Okay. Based on the recommendation. It will make a motion and then if there are any other questions. All right. 
I make the motion that the board approve the emergency plan presented by the administration to ensure that employees who need to take time off for their own illness related co to COVID-19 or for the quarantine or illness of their children related to COVID-19 may take such leave through June 30th, 2021. I have a second. Mr. Uh, Lovett seconds. Um, any discussion, any questions on it? Um, it would, would the, um, I know with, with the situation where I, I'm a, you know, construction company, we always require a, you know, a doctor's uh, slip to come in. Would that be, um, you would require that for the, for the students or for the children? Yes, sir. We're consistent with making sure that documentation that we handle um, is handled through our benefits department. So we will continue to seek that medical documentation to support the um, absence. Okay. Ms. Huddle. Um, I was just wondering, should we, it, the, I think the wording it was used was children all across the board, but I was just wondering, um, what about a dependent that's not a child? Is, do we need to worry about that or do we really just want to focus on children? We were attempting to be as consistent as possible with how the original FFCRA language was, and that original language did say child. Um, so we were hoping to be at least consistent with that. Okay, makes sense. I was okay. just curious. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, we'll vote on the question, on, on the motion. All those in favor? Do we, do we need to read it again for you, Ms. Strange? You, you got it? Okay. All those in favor of extending the COVID funds? Six and zero, so that passes. Uh, number 14, first reading proposal, 2021-2022 uh, capital budget, Exhibit D. Dr. Chairwoman Hammond, board members, and Dr. Melton. Board policy DB is, references our annual budget, which was issued in October 2013. This policy requires a favorable vote by the board on two separate readings at two separate meetings. Tonight, Mr. Cannon will come up to, to give you our first reading on our capital budget. After, the, after Mr. Cannon concludes, Mr. Garris will also provide you with the technology, an itemized portion of the technology budget, and we'll be glad to answer any questions. Mr. Cannon? Thank you, Mr. Beatonmaw. Uh, Chair Hammond, members of the board, Dr. Melton, I appreciate this opportunity to bring back the capital proposal for fiscal year 21-22. Um, to recap, we are asking your vote tonight on just this fiscal upcoming fiscal year uh, projects. Um, you also have presented in uh, your packet the kind of forecasting the, the next four years. Um, just as an update, just a reminder um, to, to go over the projects, excuse me. Uh, Irmo High School, we've got a selected roof replacement, West Wing classrooms, fan coil, exhaust fan replacement in our activities building, renovating the activity building and special services restrooms. We're going to renovate two labs, biology and environmental sciences. Chapin High School, we're proposing to renovate the existing training room. Ceiling lights, HVAC, we'll remove some walls, replace floors, add, the, add windows for daylighting, and add some exterior canopy and signage. Irmo Middle School at our gymnasium, we're looking at replacing the roof, the HVAC, the ceilings, and um, add LED lighting throughout the gymnasium building. The district office. We're looking at uh, HVAC replacement in our print shop and upfit for some additional offices. At Dutch Fork Elementary, we are looking to, to add a K-4 bathroom. And at Dutch Fork High School, we are looking at doing some waterproofing on the exterior brick walls above roof. Um, other items, school identified projects, you'll see a, a notation there. So we are in the middle of our operations access assessments with each school. Um, so what we do is we, we, we listen to each school, what their needs are, uh, what their wishes are. It could be furniture, it could be facility related, uh, it could be finish related. So we take that information, we try to prioritize where our largest needs are, and then that's how we'll use that school identified need uh, project money. 
these five, six bullet points that you see here are some areas we've already identified that we need to uh, use this money for. Uh, finally, at this time, I'll ask Ms. Garris to come up. Just, uh, I think she provided you some additional information on technology, and um, just let her briefly cover that. Thank you, Mr. Cannon. Um, yes, you have in front of you some um, these categories that you see up here on the slide and some estimates of what we budget for in terms of a plan. Um, we don't buy all this up front, some of the things we do, but most of it we don't. It's really a plan for spending. Sometimes we spend a little more in one category because something dies, we have to replace it. Sometimes we don't need quite that much, so we use it elsewhere. So what you see in front of you is what we use as our general budget to guide that spending for the technology capital. I'll be glad to answer questions about that. Did you want to finish first? Did we're, you have we more? Can open it up. Okay. Oops, sorry. Okay. We can open that up to questions then for either Mr. Cannon or myself. Okay. Any questions? You have one, Mr. Lovelace. But one observation I wanted to make I see and and I applaud you for putting this on there in fiscal year uh, 23 24. You're increasing the budget to $15 million, which is a point that I've long made that I thought we need to put more money into the capital improvements. The, the question, I, one of the questions I have for you, I noticed that say like on the um, Irmo High School window replacement project, the, the numbers are not round numbers. Those are numbers that are very specific. Are, the, are there bids already in? <clears throat> Or do you, how, how did that, how do you arrive at something down to the $87 mark? <laughs> so, for, for, great question. Um, so the items you see for this fiscal year, 21, 22, some of these projects we do have pricing for. Okay. Um, the district has a design bid contract with Thompson Turner Construction. I think that was, uh, began in June of 2018. And so the ones that you see very specific information, we do have pricing for. Yeah, well, I see if there are other questions. I'll come back to you. Any other question, Ms. Huddle? Yeah, um, can you elaborate on the, the contract you just mentioned? Uh, June of 2018, I think the district entered into a design bid contract with Thompson Turner Construction. Um, I think it's a five-year contract. Um, I know Ms. Robinson's not here tonight. So, so for our major capital projects, uh, basically they have, we have a design team as part of that contract. So we identify areas of needs, work with the design team, and once the design team comes up with the design, it goes to OSF, of course, and then Thompson Turner will then price that work. Okay, so do they actually do the work or, or it's Correct. then? Correct, yes, they oh, act so as they GC. they do the work yes. as well, okay. Um, I have some other questions too, but I want to give okay. other folks a chance. Anybody that has not asked a question, have one. If not, I'll go back to Mr. Lovelace and I'll come back to you. Question is to Mr. Cannon. I, I want the next question I have is for Ms. Garris. So if you want to fit, if you have ones for Mr. Cannon. Ms. Huddle. Well, yeah, I've got a couple. So um, what happens if an item is over budget? I mean, I realize it could go over a little bit, but is it there? If it's materially over, what's the process? So your larger projects, for instance, let's pick up Irmo Middle School. Um, you see a specific number there. We, we actually have pricing on that project. Um, we have a line item for contingency. If you'll see down at the bottom of the budget, 500000 So if we have a project, is my mic working? Yeah. It is, okay, sorry. <laughs> can hear myself. Um, if we have a project that goes over, we would, you know, if we needed, we, we may use some of those funds to pull um, if okay. it's something that's extremely over budget, we're probably going to rethink what we're doing. And, and kind of on the other side, do you ever have something come up that's major that wasn't in the budget? And if so, do you just pull it out of contingency? That's or, correct. That's okay, correct. so basically you're using the contingency for those items and for overage. And then if we go over the contingency, has that ever happened? And if so, what would happen then? It's not happened under my watch yet. Okay, <laughs> good answer. Good job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, no, I, and, and I don't want to speak. Obviously, if we have something that would go beyond, we'd have to bring that to the board. And I have another question, but I don't, it's actually maybe for our CFO. I was curious at what dollar, usually there's a parameter like you capitalize things if they're over de X dollars amount and they're expected to last more than X years. Do we know what that parameter is? And if you don't, that's fine. It's, yeah, I'll have to ask Marty to. Okay. 
See, Marty, it's like you're right on the job quickly, right? <laughs> Ms. Rawls, do you need the question again? Because you may not have been engaged right. for the beginning can of that you, since you, you weren't sure you were coming it? to the yes. microphone. Yeah. So I was curious what our parameters are for um, when to capitalize something. Is it a, a dollar amount and a useful life, or how does that work? When do we decide when to capitalize and when to not? Generally, with capitalization, we um, use that $5,000 mark. Anything over 5000 would be capitalized. Obviously, useful life would be part of it. Um, there's also some challenges whenever you're looking at a building that has a roof that has been capitalized and you're going to replace it well you've really already capitalized at one time so there's there's some gray area in there um, we do take guidance from the state department on those items so it kind of depends on what exactly the project is but five thousand would be the capitalized mark and does that play into also um, the bond like does it have to be a capital item in order for it to be included um, typically, you try to make them capital items for, for that. Um, maintenance would be more on the maintenance side in an operating type situation. Um, we do try to stick with capital in a capital budget. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Rawls. Um, you want to come back to you? anything, Mr. Yeah, I, I, I can't see I've Ms. done. I want to be sure Ms. Gardner didn't have a hand if I could. Okay. okay. Do you have your hand up? No, she did okay. not. Okay. I just couldn't see her. <laughs> I just, Ms. Garris, yes. okay. I noticed on the um, information that I, we got this afternoon that uh, in the technology area, there was a line item for data firewalls, but we don't, we don't have a, a quantity of zero. Okay, and uh, that, first of all, I. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but, but that quantity of the the dollar amount was shocking. That the firewalls, you know, for firewalls, and then I wanted to make sure that if we needed to allocate an additional amount, sum of money, as indicated on here, that we weren't shortcutting ourselves. In other words, do you need a, you know, money for firewalls, and, and because that's I know we've had parents that are very concerned with the fact that, you know, that certain things that, that their children are, can see or don't see, and I wanted to make sure that we weren't in any way putting ourselves, um, you know, at a disadvantage by not having that, you know, an update to the firewalls there. I mean, I, I'm very concerned that we, we're doing all we can, first of all, to keep our data, from, you know, away from people that don't need it. And then second of all, that, you know, that we're updating constantly because that is a constant battle. And I know that from being a business owner. So take it off. Yes, sir. I appreciate the question. You're absolutely right. The, with a capital, kind of goes to Ms. Huddle's question as well. For capital, we put in the big expense of the hardware, that initial. We continue, we have ongoing maintenance and support that we pay for through general funds for our firewall. So our, our firewalls all up, are up to date. The reason I put them in here with the zero is this year we're still, technology typically has a five to six year lifespan. Our firewalls are currently three years old. So we're going to be looking forward to, I wanted to leave this in there, even though it's zero for this upcoming year. We will be needing to replace those firewalls in the next two to three years. I would like to do it on the short end versus the big end. Next year's not the year we have to. If we end up with extra money, that would be somewhere I would put them to be ahead of the game. Um, but our firewalls, firewalls are current. They are able to be updated. Um, there's some features in a newer model that we'll go to that we look forward to. But I feel very confident right now with our firewalls as well. And to answer part of your question, one of the things we bought this past year was an updated content filter, which leads to some of those questions because I absolutely agree. That's something that we are continually updating, monitoring, improving. Uh, working with people that reach out and find holes. Unfortunately, that happens at times, and we really work very, very hard to try to fill that, um, fill those gaps. So firewalls, um, you hit it right on the head. They are critically important, but we are good on those right now. I do not need those for this upcoming year. Unless we'd have a windfall, we could replace them early, but it's really in the next two to three years that we really will absolutely need to replace them. And you can see they're not a small ticket item. <laughs> right. Uh, Ms. Gardner. Actually, this question is for Mr. Cannon, so if, if anybody else wants to ask a different, I don't want to go back and forth. It's okay. okay, back and forth, okay. Um, 
I have a question. It looks like we, you know we've talked quite a bit as a board about um, the HVAC units and what we were hoping to use some of our ESSER funds in the future. And I was just looking, and it looks like we have well, well, um, a couple of schools, or at least um, Irmo High School is going to have. Or it might be middle school now. I've already forgotten. But the you're, you're replacing an HVAC for the upcoming year, and also in the district office. Do we already have those? I guess my question is, are we ready to, to upfit them to do the changes per minute thing that we've talked about? I don't have the right great, terminology. No, great question, um, and, I, and I think I know where you're going. So uh, I actually created this slide because uh, I think Mr. Lovelace asked at the last board meeting. So with the ESSER two funds, we are, we are already trying to get ahead of the game. Um, we've got our mechanical consultant that we work with a lot. Um, to, we know the schools. Uh, let's just say that they may have older systems, you know, they're appropriate for that school, but we're looking at, okay, what can we do better? So we're trying to, we've, you know, get this firm out in front of this and say, you know, what, what can we do at these schools to improve indoor air quality, things of that nature. So we're actually looking at all of our, all of our schools that are more than 10 years old um, from an HVAC perspective, and what can we do system-wide, you know, for that particular school to help improve when we get to that school. Um, so th these are just two of the items. Uh, we ha also have another group that's going to look at one of our schools, do indoor air quality analysis uh, free of charge, give us that information back um, so that we can use that and, and determine, hey, what, if anything, do we need to do? So just as clarification, we, we won't be just changing out Irmo High School's gymnasiums, HVAC, it will automatically, we'll already be integrating what we already know about this. Like if we approve the capital budget tonight, it's, we're not just gonna go with the old system or what we had planned before. This would be like an upgraded be according to what we need for going forward for COVID. Cor correct, so uh, the Irmo High School project for this summer, we do have, that is a fan cool replacement. Um, the activity building has boilers and chillers. We're also replacing the outdoor air unit there for the activity building, the gymnasium building. So those things are, are, are items we're planning on doing this summer. Um, our ESSER two funds, we'd be looking at more of our systems we're not planning this summer, you know, moving forward on what upgrades we need to make, if that answers your question. Anybody else? Come back. Mr. Lovett, you're next. Mr. Cannon, I, I stumbled <clears throat> upon this a couple of weeks ago and I was looking, looking at, you know, guaranteed energy savings performance contracting. Okay, and um, that's not only analysis of where we were going, but you could, we could, uh, with our ESRA two and I hope maybe ESRA three front funds, if that doesn't you know, if it's not too long, but <laughs> there's, there's a considerable amount of money in that. Anyway, so I was wondering if we could look into performance contracting in which, you know, not only do we analyze it, but, but we contract with somebody that actually guarantees us, bonded, you know, uh, entity that guarantees us a return if we follow those requirements that, that they've put forth. And I know that, that funds are limited, but sure. you know, I've, I've just studied this in, over the last couple of weeks, and I wanted to, I wanted to present that, um, you know, in, to, you know in, or have you present it, or maybe we could look at it together or whatever, but sure. I think it's a way that we could, we could you know, get some money back on energy savings, and not only through air conditioning, but through lighting controls and, and power supply controls and things like that. So. I, can, I can tell you, Mr. Lovelace, um, I actually participated on a call this afternoon with a few other uh, district operations representatives throughout the state. Um, as you can imagine, there, there are so many things being thrown out there right now people know districts are getting ESSER funds. And so we're, we're getting anything and everything presented to us. Um, performance contracting is one of those things that, you know, it's, it's a somewhat newer tech, um, I guess, project delivery as far as energy savings. And so that's something we will definitely consider moving forward. Good. Um, I had one with technology. Are most of our, is, is, it, is it middle th school through, seniors that have um, the Chromebooks, or do we have the, uh, do all of our kids, do, do our elementary students have the individual one-to-one -one Chromebooks? 
Yes, ma'am. All of our students have Chromebooks. Um, we do have two schools that were magnet schools that had previously purchased iPads for their kindergartners. So right. they are slightly different, but the standard device across the district is the, is Chromebook. the Chromebook. I was just checking. And then we sort of have, I always wondered, I think I heard you already say it's a five or six year sort of rotate out with a company where yeah, yes. Chromebooks can actually go a little longer, six to seven years. Um, they do better in the hands of a high schooler than a middle schooler, which yeah. I bet you can <laughs> appreciate that. <laughs> Somehow my middle schoolers kind of bust them sometimes. They drop them and stuff. <laughs> do y'all yes, make them have the case? You know how they, they, we make ours have the case. This is middle school because they're just, they're just rougher, but you're right, high school. But I, for some reason, I didn't know if all of our kids had the Chromebook. That's what I wanted Yes, ma'am. This year was elementary's first year to be one-to-one. -one. We've, we've always had devices in the classroom, but this year being and what it was, it we had devices that are going home, and we bought cases for those as well. So previously, we didn't buy cases for elementary because we really didn't need them because they were in the classroom. But going back and forth to home, they absolutely you did. Thank you. Yes. Um, is that any more questions? If not, we'll move forward with, um, yeah, we got to have a motion, but I was just thinking, where are we? We're on, um, yeah, 14. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Ms. Gardner. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we recommend the approval of the first reading of the proposed five-year capital budget plan. Is there a second? Ms. Huddle seconds. Any other questions? All those in favor? Six and no oppose. So that passes.